everybody, my name is Givento. Welcome back to the channel. By now, hopefully, some of you at least have been able to download my newly released map, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Minecraft, made all in TechIt. Hopefully it's working out just fine for you, but I do know that some of you have a few questions about how the stuff is actually working. So I thought that why not just make a simple tutorial for you guys, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Today we're gonna go through how to operate the nuclear reactor. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, that would be very much appreciated. And if you like this video, don't forget to show that to me by leaving me a thumbs up. Alright, let's dive into this. Okay, before we dive into this, <clears throat> there is something that I need to tell you. Unfortunately, before I put this map out, I made a mistake. A mistake that is probably going to affect you playing this map a little bit. But I'm gonna sort that problem out right now. And I'm gonna fix the original file so that you can re-download it if you want that. But it's, it's pretty easily fixed. So please pay attention because this is important. Otherwise, you won't be able to load the reactor via the lever or via the control room. You're gonna have to load it manually. So do what I do right now. Okay. There we go. What I did, the mistake that I made was that I put the ejector that I'm holding in my hand in the wrong fucking direction. I put it this, what you're seeing right now is correct. But on the released map version, this one is, you know, facing the wrong way. The gray part is facing the wall, and that's where things kind of come out, you know? So, which means that when you pull the lever, nothing happens because there's a wall in the way. So what you gotta do is that you gotta delete the ejector. You see, all the uranium rods are right there. So this is the proper way. This is the way it's supposed to look like. So go ahead and change this. This is only in central hall number four. So it's just two blocks that you gotta change. Open the menu and search for ejector. This item right here. Delete the ejectors that are already on the wall and put them so that they look like this facing this way. The gray part needs to be outwards, okay? Step number two, put uranium cells inside of the ejector, like this. Unfortunately, you can't stack uranium cells on top of each other, so you're gonna have to use up your, your item box like this. And as you can see, we filled it up completely. Now, Let's make our way back to the control room. Now we are in control room number four. So what we're gonna do now, look at this. We're gonna stand up here at this wall and you can see this lever over here. It says fuel rod loader. We just filled up the ejector completely with uranium rods. I'm gonna pull this lever over here one time and then we turn it off. And then we'll go back to the central hall four. We're gonna take a look at the ejector, okay? All right, we are back at central hall four. And we're gonna take a look at the ejector here. It should be one uranium rod missing because it should have traveled all the way down here down to the core. As you can see, there's one spot missing, which means it's working just fine. And the same procedure goes with the cooling rods. We got a cooling rod ejector over here that is also connected to the reactor core and it has its own lever in the control room of number four. So you're gonna have to, you know, you, you can load the reactor with coolant cells. If anything goes to hell, just, just load, 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 load. So always see to it that this one, which is empty at the moment, has a lot of coolant cells and make sure it's the big coolant cells, the 60K for fast cooldown, all right? All right, then we're gonna load this into this ejector. Just fill it up completely with 60K coolant cells for fast cooling, all right? So, when you pull the cooling lever, the emergency AZ5 button, the all famous button in the control room, you're gonna load up the reactor with coolant cells. But be aware that it will only travel to the empty spots in the reactor, which means that if the reactor is already full with either uranium cells or coolant cells or both, there won't be any place to put the new coolant cell. Don't forget that. All right, 
So, I'm gonna demonstrate this for you right now. As you can see, I'm gonna put the lever over here. Now take a look at this tube. What we're gonna see here is a uranium cell traveling all the way down to the core when I pull the lever. There you go. And it's going all the way down to the core, loading itself inside of the reactor. Now we're gonna go down to the core and take a look at this, all right? See here, there we go. I'm gonna take a little shortcut. There we go, there's the stairs. Great stuff. Okay, let's go inside of the reactor now. And you're gonna see, here we are, going up. Now we're inside the core, and this is the actual nuclear reactor. And as you can see, the uranium cells are loaded in here, just the way that I wanted it to. Now, do not, for the love of God, do not remove the reactor heat vents that are in the corners of the nuclear reactor, because they will reduce the heat automatically. They won't take it away, but they will reduce it greatly, okay? Now, let's, uh, let's go through how the reactor actually is working, okay? Go ahead and take out a few uranium cells. We're gonna start up with... Uh, yeah, you know what, just fill up the bar down here with single uranium cells. Don't use the quad or the dual uranium cells because it'll generate heat way too fast and before you know how to control the reactor, that will just cause a major accident. So let's, let's take it easy from the beginning. Uranium cells. Open up the reactor. I'm gonna remove this. We're gonna start from scratch, completely from scratch. All right, so here we go. Here we got an empty nuclear reactor core. Put the uranium cells in here because it is the fuel of the reactor. Don't put it in the corners because what you need to do, and this is very important, you need to surround every uranium cells with cooling cells. Otherwise, the heat will go up way too fast and it'll cause an explosion, all right? So we're gonna go and do like this, like that. We're gonna go like that and that and there and there. We're gonna start simple with that, all right? Now, go for the 10K coolant cells if you want to. You can also use the other coolant cells, but I'm just gonna use these ones for now. I'm gonna replace the uranium cells in my inventory with coolant cells. We need a lot of coolant cells, okay? More coolant cells than uranium cells. And you put these coolant cells above, underneath, and besides the uranium cells, like this, just like this. No other way at all, all right? Okay, we're gonna need more, fine. I'm gonna do like this. These big ones, doesn't matter. Underneath and above, underneath, underneath. We still need a few more. Great stuff, okay. I'm gonna put them like this. We covered them all. Now you've properly installed the reactor with coolant cells and with fuel, which means the reactor is actually ready to be activated. So let's do that. Let's activate it and listen to the sound. You, you will hear a noise when the reactor is on. You hear that? This reactor is now actually operating. You can see that the fuel has begun to, you know, it's beginning to get used up. Also the coolant cells. And do remember that the 10K coolant cells, the small coolant cells, they will run out pretty fast. Not extremely fast, but pretty fast. So keep an eye always, when the reactor is active, always keep an eye on the reactor in the control room. Look at the warning system. I made an alarm system in the control room that is directly connected to the reactor via these thermostats. So when the temperature rises, these will go off, sending a signal to the control room, igniting a lamp of different colors. Green is fine, totally fine. Orange, I mean yellow, it means that, you know, the heat is, is, is rising. It's, it, there's nothing strange about that at all. When it goes up to orange, you should be a little bit worried. You should make your way down to the reactor 
immediately, actually, and replace the coolant rods because they're running out. If it goes up to red, the alarm will go off. Then you are most likely shit out of luck. You probably won't make it in time to the, you know, to the core to turn this shit off because it will. It means that it's burning and it will blow up eventually. You might have maybe 30 seconds from the red light goes on. Um, the fastest thing to stop that is to actually destroy the reactor. Don't, don't bother taking out the rods because the reactor is already on fire and if it blows up, it blows up. You're fucked, okay? So just, just destroy the reactor. That's the best option you got to stop it all, all right? And don't ever, ever, ever leave the reactor turned on if you're gonna explore the rest of the map because that's what I did. I forgot that I put fuel in here I completely forgot and time went on and shit got real it fucking exploded and the half of the map was destroyed and I just uh, you know I wanted to die so let's take a look here we've been here for a while the coolant cells are still they're fine you know so what we're gonna do now this reactor is now actually producing power, okay? It's producing power. I'm gonna show you that by going out to the turbine hall. So, we're gonna have to go out of here, leave the core. I have to leave the reactor turned on or I won't be able to show you this. So, let's see, the fastest way should be over here. Yeah, unit four pumps. You go via uh, the pumps on the second floor. Sorry, first floor. There we go, turbine hall. You see, this turbine right here is connected to the reactor. There we go. You see this one in the middle? It's producing power as we speak because the reactor is turned on. We created power. So now what we're gonna have to do is that we're gonna have to turn off the reactor so that we won't cause any major trouble here. Okay then, so always load one, two, three, no, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maximum six uranium rods at a time. Six uranium rods, all right? The rest can be cooling rods. As many as you like until you fill it up. Doesn't matter, but maximum six uranium rods. That's what I recommend. The problem also is that if you put these uranium cells too close to each other, without having any coolant cells, it'll go fast. You will notice that it will generate a massive amount of heat in no time. See, if I pull out all these and only put uranium cells here, temperature is gonna rise pretty fast. You see, it's already on 2000, which is the yellow light. When it goes up to 3600, I'm gonna pull, pull it out fast. I don't want it to go to the red light, but I'm just gonna show you how fast it goes if you forget the coolant cells or if you forget pulling them out and replacing them when they're out of fuel, okay? Don't forget the coolant cells. There we go. You see, smoke is coming out of the reactor. This is going fast. I'm gonna pull this out fast as fuck. I'm gonna cool this down really fast. Actually, we're gonna turn it off. Force the lever. There we go. Hands off. Now, if I would have let the uranium rod stay in there, you see the smoke? Sooner or later, that would turn into fire. And when that happens, you're pretty much fucked because the next thing that happens is a massive, massive explosion. The last time I made that mistake, I took with me half of the reactor building. It was just a giant big crater left of nothing and a pile of shit. Simulating the actual accident pretty well, yes, I know. But still, I hadn't, I hadn't made a backup of it, so I... Uh, yeah, that was pretty fucked. There we go, the temperature is definitely going down. We're at 2000. The smoke sh should go away soon enough. 
Temperature is going down slowly, but it's definitely going down. This one will always be on because it's at zero, because the green light should always be on in the control room, all right? There we go. There we go. Thank you. Now I'm calm again. Now I'm calm, okay? That is it for this tutorial, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to do that. And if you do, don't forget to turn on your notifications and you won't miss out on any new important videos just like this one. There will be more tutorials in the future to come. And if you like this video, don't forget to show me by leaving me a thumbs up. That would be very much appreciated as well. And as always, have a great evening and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.